Richard, in your new report, you say that in the next 20 years, the total population in most developed countries will peak or it will begin to decline. Is this something that we should embrace or something we should fear? Well, as with most uh, epical historical transformations, there's an upside and there's a downside. Uh, the upside is mainly environmental. Slower growing or contracting populations means less resource pressure. Uh, it may mean an improved quality of life, uh, uh, less crowding, maybe even a uh, quicker commute into Washington in the morning. That could be tough. That could be a tough one. <laughs> But on the other hand, uh, the demographic shift to the aging of populations uh, also will mean slower economic growth. And population size and economic size together are powerful engines of national power. Now, if the entire world were moving lock sync in tandem into humanity's graying future, none of this might matter. But that's not the case. Some countries will be aging much more rapidly and contracting while others will still be growing. And the crux of the matter is that most of those which will be stagnant or contracting are those with the longest tradition of commitment to free markets, liberal democracy, and human rights, while many of those which will still be young and growing don't have the same historical commitment. Do current demographic trends um, impact our fiscal situation and our budget process? Graying means paying. Paying more for pensions, more for health care, more for social services for the elderly. The long-term fiscal challenge in the United States is essentially an entitlement challenge. And the entitlement challenge is essentially a demographic challenge. And what makes our current fiscal situation so worrisome um, is that we are now uh, on the cusp of this demographic transformation. The leading edge of the baby boom turned 65 this year, and yet we already have a public debt that is at record levels, at the highest level since World War II. In short, we've run out of the fiscal room to accommodate rising old age benefit expenditures. There are no more win-win solutions. What kind of youth bulge are we seeing right now in the Middle East, and is it affecting um, the tectonic shift in uh, governments there? All of the countries uh, in North Africa and in the Middle East currently have large youth bulges. Um, they, have, they are peaking now and will begin to decline, but most of them are close to, the, are close to their historical, uh, 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 historical peak. I think there's certainly uh, a connection. After all, it's the frustrated aspirations of youth that are driving the upheaval uh, in the Muslim world today. The fact that the youth population is so numerous is one uh, of several reasons why it's been difficult to meet their aspirations. And it seems clear to me that without the large youth bulge, uh, the pressure on current regimes would be less than it is. So it's not the only factor. Obviously, it's the failure of governments to create opportunity for youth. But given uh, uh, the failed uh, uh, political economy uh, in these countries, the presence of a large youth bulge drives instability. Dr. Richard Jackson, thank you for your time and for a fascinating discussion. You're welcome. It's been my pleasure, Andrew.